Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is uh, going to be a little bit different video than I typically make. I'm obviously not outside filming the beauty of Guam. I'm sitting inside at my desk and the reason for that is because I recently traveled back to the United States, to the um, continental United States, <laughs> to Ohio to visit my family. I hadn't seen them in a year and a half because of COVID. So at the time of filming this video, I'm in quarantine and I have to stay inside for a couple more days. I did receive a negative test, which was good, but uh, I gotta hang out here for a little while longer. While I'm here, figured I'd make a few videos that I hope will be helpful to people who maybe don't know a whole lot about Guam. I wanted to talk about, you know, is Guam safe? What's the cost of living here? Um, what language is spoken in Guam? Because there's, you know, there's Chamorro, there's English. How many people speak Chamorro? How many people speak English? Uh, so if you're a long-term resident of Guam, you, you already know all the answers to these questions. This might not be super interesting to you, but maybe you're like my wife and I a year and a half ago thinking about moving here, maybe as a travel nurse or contract work, or maybe you're just tired of the winter and you want to move somewhere warm and Guam's on your radar. These are kind of going to be videos geared more towards people like you. For the sake of making this video as concise and as helpful as possible, I just wanted to touch on kind of some, some, some of the big stuff. Transportation, food at the grocery store, rent, what it's going to cost you to rent, what it's going to cost you to uh, for some entertainment, right? Uh, and if you have any specific questions about specific things, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I can respond back to those uh, to the best of my ability. I will say, if you are coming here as a military member, this information may not be uh, as relevant to you as if you're coming here as a local resident. So everyone assumes that I'm in the military because I'm white and I have a short haircut and I live in Guam, but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I've been a, just a local resident here in two different villages since my time here. And so this video is gonna be geared more towards what it costs to be a local resident, not the military, because they have other amenities that the local residents don't have. They have the uh, naval exchange, their own grocery stores, their own gasoline pumps that have uh, vastly lower prices than what you're gonna find in the, the local store, or so I'm told. And so this is gonna be more if you're, you're living as a local, but if you are in the military, some of this is gonna be relevant to you. All right, so let's first talk about groceries. This is a big question mark in a lot of people's budgets when they're considering moving here, as it was with my wife and I. Read a bunch of numbers online and I kept hearing budget two times for two, whatever you're paying in the United States, budget two times that for your grocery bill in Guam. And I was skeptical about that. I was like, yeah, I bet I can beat that number. But now that I've lived here for about a year and a half, I would say that if you're going to the main grocery store, which is Payless Markets, which is probably the most convenient grocery store, that number is actually pretty accurate. My wife and I didn't make any big dietary changes when we came here. We try to eat relatively healthy, not a lot of canned food or frozen food. Uh, and what we found is that when we walk out of the grocery store, it's about double what we would if we walked out of a Kroger or a Walmart or a Meyer or a Publix back in the States. One of the obvious reasons for that is because this is an island. There's not a lot of production of food that happens here, so almost everything has to be imported. Produce and anything that's perishable like dairy uh, is generally significantly more expensive here because it ha they have to get it here somewhat quick or else it goes bad. So I actually went to Payless the other day and I wrote down some prices for um, some foods that I typically ate back in the States and still eat. So doo -doo -doo -doo, dairy here, it's pricey. A uh, container of sour cream, $4.50. A half gallon of milk is $5.29. Eggs, $3 a dozen, that's not too bad, but shredded cheese or sliced cheese, which my wife and I love, that's about double the price as it is back home, uh, $5.59. Produce, oranges are $3 a pound. Those bagged pre-made salads, I used to eat them all the time for lunch. They're about $3.50 back home in Columbus, about $7.50 here. Spinach for salad, $6. Avocados and onions, Especially avocados uh, are grown locally here, so they're $1.79 a pound, not too bad. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, about double the price. Meat is not that expensive here, which surprised me. I'd say comparable uh, to what I was used to. Ground beef, $3.19 a pound. Pork chops, $4.25 a pound. Steak is actually a little bit cheaper here, which my wife loves. Bacon, though, is not. Bacon is $8 for uh, just a regular pack of bacon. And deli meat. This is something I used to make sandwiches out of all the time. Deli meat and cheese and mustard or whatever. 
deli meat for nine ounces of you know sliced chicken oscar meyer stuff is seven dollars for one of those little lunch meat containers canned food on average 250 a can that's fruit and vegetables and then just miscellaneous stuff a bag of chips doritos will cost you 450 a 12 pack of coke cans or pepsi cans six dollars and 79 cents here Paper towels, about $10 for eight rolls. Toilet paper for a regular size, you know, I don't know, 12, 12 rolls or 24 rolls, cost you $14. Frozen foods, pizza is $9 and up. A quart of ice cream, $8.49. And then frozen fruits, about $5 a pound. Payless Supermarkets actually just opened up an online shopping resource on their website. And so if there's a specific food item that you're looking to price out today, you can go get the... Uh, the current price of that on their website. And I don't want to fail to mention that there are there are places where you can get some better prices. They might not be as convenient. There are local farmers markets, local people who sell produce for cheaper than the grocery store. Uh, there are smaller chain grocery stores that can beat pay less on certain prices, but I just put pay less down there because I think probably most people are gonna go there to buy their groceries. Now, what if I don't like to cook a whole lot and I like to go out to eat instead? Is the price still gonna be double? I'd say, no, it's not gonna be double. If you're going to a sit-down restaurant like an Applebee's or a Lone Star Steakhouse or an Olive Garden, which they all have here, I would expect to pay anywhere from 25 to 50% more than those same chain restaurants in the continental United States. Generally, when going to a place like that, in Columbus, my wife and I could walk out for about $30, not including the tip. Here, I'd say it's closer to $40, maybe maybe $45. So it is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but not double. There is fast food here, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Panda Express. <laughs> and those are a touch more expensive, but not terribly ex more expensive than you would find back home. And you can find good, local, cheap food. So there's a couple uh, restaurants that I frequent often. The Taco Shack in Agate uh, has really good prices. Uh, Fat Boy Slim is a food truck here. Killer food, real cheap. I don't know how they do it, but I love that place. And there's a like, Japanese food stand down the street, Onigiri 7, and they have really good prices. So if you're willing to look around a little bit more and maybe avoid the chain restaurants, you can save some money. What about transportation? What are your options for transportation? What are they going to cost you? Well, if you're looking to buy a used car, maybe even a new car, the prices is gonna be a touch higher than it is back in the continental United States, but uh, buying a vehicle isn't significantly more expensive. When you get closer to Asia, typically you see an uptick in mopeds and scooters and small motorcycles. Just started raining outside. Uh, that actually is a, a good point. <laughs> you don't see a ton of them here. And I think part of that is the rainy season. It rained a lot between July and December, and so they're not as convenient. Most people have cars, although you can buy one here. There are many people who do, and you can get one for probably $1,000 up or so if you're willing to buy in the used market. And then there are proper uh, Yamaha, Kawasaki dealers that will sell you one for a couple thousand bucks brand new. Where those become a little bit more attractive is in the price of gasoline. So gasoline here, I bought it the other day. It was $4.37. I bought it a week ago in Ohio and it was $2.50. So there's about a $2 to $1.50 difference between the two. And that's been pretty a pretty stable ratio for the entire time I've been here. Public transportation. I thought that maybe when I came here, I could just ride the bus to different locations and wouldn't need to buy a car. No, I, that, <laughs> that didn't work out. <laughs> when, when you look online, there are some websites and government sites that talk about the public transportation here, but it, it really is not a reasonable option for getting around in any kind of timely manner. In some places, it's non-existent. In the places where it is, it's, it's just not, it's not something you're gonna to wanna to rely on for transportation. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you're gonna need some kind of personal transportation when you're here. There are um, some apps like, it's not Uber, I can't remember what it's called here. And I've heard that the reliability on those and the drivers is mm, spotty. Sometimes you can get a ride, sometimes you can't. Right now, with all the tourists gone because of COVID, probably pretty limited in, in that category. All right, now let's talk about rent. 
when I was doing my research, I was seeing a similar number for budgeting here as I was seeing with groceries. People were saying budget twice as much for rent as you were paying back in the States. And I thought, ah, I don't, I don't really know if it's that high or not. So let me compare this to what I was paying back in Columbus. I think Columbus, I was living there in a two bedroom, two bathroom, uh, mid, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mid, middle class, <laughs> middle class apartment. It was nice, but certainly nothing fancy living in the suburbs of Columbus. I'm gonna compare the rent in Guam to that because I think that's probably a pretty good average. I was paying $900 in Columbus for that and living there with my wife. When we moved to Guam, the first place that we lived was in Sinahanya village in the middle of the island, paying about $1,800, and the apartment was about comparable to what we had. We now live in Tumon, and we pay $1,500 a month for a nice two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment, also comparable to the one that we had back in Ohio. And so $900 in Ohio, $1,500 here, not quite double, but we get a deal living in the apartment here because it's owned by my wife's employer. So it's not really indicative of the, the average prices that you're gonna pay. And you might think $1,500, how is that a deal? Well, it, it kind of is here in Guam for the location that we're based in. I would say if you're coming from the continental United States and you're not wanting to change your standard of living, you wanna stay in a comparable apartment on Guam, I would say that double is a safe number. You might even wanna budget a little bit more. The majority of the apartments that we looked at when we first moved to Guam were actually right around $2,000 or $2, to $2,200. And there's a reason for that. If a military member wants to live off base while they're stationed here, they get a stipend from the military for I believe $2,200. And they have to spend all of that money or else you know, they don't get to keep it. And so the landlords know this. A lot of the apartments that are comparable to the apartments back in the States they all price them right around $2,200 or somewhere, you know, a couple hundred dollars one way or the other. So just to make things simple, I would say that budgeting double for rent is appropriate. And you can adjust that based on your situation. If you only need a one bedroom, then you're, you're going to get away cheaper. If you need a three bedroom, well, it's going to cost you more. The way you live on the island is also going to, to factor into your rent, just like anywhere in the world. Uh, if you live in, in Tumon, Dededo, Tamuning, Aganya, your rent's going to be more expensive than if you live down south in Santa Rita, Marizo, Inarahan, places further away from the tourist districts. What about utilities, electricity, water, garbage? Our utilities here are actually paid for, but from the people that I've talked to, they're paying about $250, $300 a month. Again, it's going to depend on how much you run your air conditioner. If you run it all the time, it's going to be higher. Uh, if you're only running it on you know, peak hours, it's going to get way cheaper. Both my wife and I have a gym membership. We used to pay $20 a month to go to Planet Fitness back in Ohio. <laughs> Here, though, there's no Planet Fitness. There's Paradise Fitness. And there's also, um, there's another one. Uh, we used to go to the International Sports Center in Agania, something like that. And the memberships that I've seen and that I'm paying currently, about 65 to $85 a month. You can get them cheaper if you work for the government and there's some other discounts and things like that, but if you're just paying full price, 60 to 85 bucks. CrossFit gems here, about the same as what you're gonna pay for CrossFit in the States. Finally, the last category is entertainment, and unfortunately I'm very underqualified to talk about what, the, what it costs to be entertained in Guam <laughs> because three months after I got here, COVID-19 shut down basically all the entertainment and very little of it has opened back up. I can say, you know, if you want to go to a movie, it's probably eight to ten dollars. And if you're from the, the your home is back in the states, then that's pretty comparable. If you're making a budget, I would say whatever your your entertainment budget is currently, it's probably going to be about the same in Guam. And if a lot of your entertainment involves alcohol, I'm not going to be much help in that category either because I don't drink. <laughs> so, so all in all, what does it cost to live in Guam? I would say if you're making a budget, that budget should probably about be about fifty percent higher than it is if you're living back in the continental United States in, in most areas. There are some things that are very comparable in price. There are a few things that are cheaper, uh, but there are also some significant categories where the cost is probably about double. So if you're from Tennessee and you're currently living on $2,000 a month, 
I would say you're probably looking at more like $3,000 a month if you want to move to Guam. So I hope that that was somewhat helpful. I would say that most of the information that I found online is actually pretty accurate and those numbers are not inflated. And again, if you have a question about a specific thing and what it costs and if it's available or not, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Uh, and if I can't answer it, maybe I can find somebody who can. I think for my next video, I'm going to tackle the topic of is Guam safe? I can finally answer that question firsthand. I've heard all kinds of different, different uh, <laughs> answers to that question. But we'll tackle that one next. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that little bell notification that lets you know, notifies you every time a new video comes out so you don't miss anything. Uh, and if you'd hit that like button too, that really helps with the whole YouTube algorithm and helping the channel grow and get uh, the videos sent out to more people. So that would be great. Until next time, hope you have a fantastic day. Talk to you later from Guam.